Hello, my fellow pals. It's your boy, Daniel Bandian here, once again, with another episode of the Pals TV, the Experience Podcast Series. The series where we discuss topics in relation to positivity, appreciation, love, and support. So today, my fellow pals, I just want to start off the day by challenging you to a staring contest. Ready? Let's go. Oh my god. Ah, these freaking contacts. Oh my gosh, yeah. So like, unfortunately, yeah, you pals, you win. <laughs> unfortunately, like, since like I wear contacts, it's really hard for me to do like, you know, these staring contests because it's like, oh my gosh, my eyes like dry out really easily. So it's like, I have to like, you know, blink, I have to blink. Oh my gosh, yeah, blink. Like the Blackpink fan base, you know, blink. Or like, you know, that that artist from the 90s and early 2000s, blink 182, get it? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so crazy. Oh my gosh, I need to stop getting off topic. Sorry. Anyways, 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 I am totally excited for the guest that we're actually going to feature today. Her name is Udon, like Udon noodles. Oh my gosh, Udon noodles are so delicious. The noodles, and then when you have it with like that yummy broth, oh my gosh, it's just like, you know, it's the perfect comfort food. Like, you know, if it's a rainy day, you know, like, you know, if it's cold, you just know that you want Udon or noodles. Like, you know, Udon is perfect. Oh my gosh, Udon, I really love it. But, you know, going back to, you know, Udon, Udon does, you know, a lot of artwork. And I've seen a lot of her artwork on Instagram. You know, I love the design of them as well as the color schemes. So I really, you know, admire all the works that, you know, Udon presents to us. And another reason for why I'm entirely excited to feature Udon is because, as I mentioned earlier in the episode with Wensi, I actually mentioned that I am not really that good at drawing, okay? I mean, I at most know how to draw like stick figures and like, you know, but I cannot do like those illustrations that Udon does. So of course it's like, you know, I would be interested in learning that, you know, myself. It's going to be great because it's like an opportunity to learn advice on, you know, how she does her artworks and it's going to be, you know, perfect. And I really hope that she, you know, inspires all of you as well. Because, you know, what I want to aim for this podcast episode is that, you know, to our fellow pals who are watching this, that they not only provide entertainment, but they also hopefully provide inspiration for, you know, folks who are wanting to learn a new skill or to pursue their dreams. So I'm very, you know, excited to feature Udon for that reason. Anyways, let's put our hands together for the wonderful Udon. Hello, Udon. I really love your name. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Udon, Udon, Udon. I know I mentioned it earlier, but like, I really love your name. How have you been, girl? Hi, Daniel. I'm doing well. I'm finally home. Yeah. After my quarantine and oh. I'm vibing. How are you? Oh my gosh. I'm actually doing very well. You know, I, you know, I'm very, you know, excited and jumpy today because I feel like maybe it's because of my coffee. It's either because of the coffee that I had or because of my ADHD. It's either one of them, but either way, I'm with it. Perfect. Yay. Well, you know, I'm really glad to hear that you are home now. And, you know, I'm really glad that, you know, you're home now after quarantining. I just hope like, you know, you're doing what you can to stay safe, you know, nonetheless. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to be indoors for a while. Awesome. Definitely. I feel like it's important that we do everything that we can to stay inside and shelter in place. People are kind of like, you know, still going out to party. You know, I'm just going to be staying inside because, you know, I don't feel comfortable even going out to party myself. So, you know, I mean, we could party over Zoom. I mean, that's fine to do, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it was a little shocking to see where like, uh, I don't know, driving by restaurants are opening up again and like people are going out as if we're in the normal times yeah. but yeah more zoom parties yeah i'll let's do it the safe way and let's have a zoom party we will turn up over zoom <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i love this so anyways sorry for getting a bit off topic you know so udon udon oh my gosh like i said mentioned earlier i really love the new udon because it like it's not only a catchy name, but then it always makes me think of, you know, those delicious noodles, you know, those like noodles. Oh my gosh, it makes you want to slurp. It's so good. Oh my God. <laughs> but anyways, if you don't mind me asking, how did you, you know, come up with the nickname Udon? Um, Udon kind of randomly happened. Like, I don't know that there's a particular significance to that being what I picked. I just sort of at one point was like trying to put together words to make a username that sounded interesting. And like, 
Udon monster this sounded good to me for whatever reason, and it wasn't taken by anyone else. And it also wasn't like similar to any other usernames that I'd seen. Um, and I like the idea of having like a little noodle monster mascot, which I haven't designed yet, but might in the future. So um, yeah, it was it was kind of a random decision, but it ended up being what I go by. But you know what, even if it's like, you know, even if it comes off, you know, being like kind of a random name, like, you know, based on, you know, something that occurred to you at the time, it actually worked out because now with the Udon, specifically the Udon monster, <laughs> I love that name, Udon monster. It's so unique. I mean, for real, it's like you chose such a unique name and it actually became your brand now. So, you know, I have to give you props for that because it's like, you know, what would work. And it just so happens that it worked out because it's like, it worked out by luck. And, you know, it's like, you gonna what I gotta say, Udon? You know what would sound catchy. So I gotta give you props for that, Udon. Well, thank you. I'm glad it's stuck and doesn't sound stupid. <laughs> no, it sounds great. Besides, every time I hear the your name Udon, you know what I think of? It makes me want to go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> of course it does. Get it? Oh my gosh. So anyways, <laughs> something about me is like, you know, I really love to say a lot of puns, you know, even if it's... Even if I could tell people are cringing by my puns, guess what? Your cringe makes me want to say it even more. <laughs> don't I know it? <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, like, don't I, don't you like notice that I do tend to say like a lot of puns, Udon? I do. I have noticed that about you, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But like, you know, in regards to puns, like, you know, I'm surprised I've never been punched in the face yet. Daniel. <laughs> Like, that would suck, right? Like, I hope I really don't get punched in the face. Because, like, for reals, like, to, to damage this pretty face, who would want to damage this face? I don't want to damage this face. Oh, heck no. Nobody better punch me in the face. Because who can punch this beautiful face? Who could do it? Who could do it, Daniel? Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Sorry. Starting off, you know, I just want to say I'm very thankful for this opportunity to meet with you. With regards to your goals and dreams, you know, I was wondering if you could, you know, talk a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, um, so I am Udon, I go by Udon, and I'm mostly known um, online for drawing a lot of anime fan art on Instagram and Twitter mainly. Um, I've always drawn, uh, it's always been something that I like to do, and it recently became something that I do to kind of earn money as well as just continue to enjoy myself uh and it's been a really big part of how I'm staying sane and a positive during the pandemic I actually have to give you props for mentioning that because you know first you start off saying like you know drawing is like a favorite hobby of yours with you know individuals and very many folks who, you know, have various, like, you know, hobbies and interests, it's like they could put that to their advantage. And then if they want to use that to make their own brand, you know, like, for example, if somebody like loves drawing or cooking, you know, they could conduct some personal selling for themselves, especially through a digital realm. And that will be an opportunity for them to, you know, not only get their brand out, but to also, you know, potentially work in the market. So, you know, it actually works out pretty well that way. So I really have to, you know, give props to you for doing that. Yeah, uh, drawing has been a really convenient and lucky hobby because just as you said, like it's something that I like to do and it also happens to be something that I can monetize. No, and that that's definitely like really great to do. So therefore, like as a result of all of this, you know, my fellow pals, if you have like, you know, specific hobbies or, you know, things that you're interested in, I would say, you know, just keep going for your interests. Any of you like, you know, enjoy cooking or makeup or, you know, drawing, I encourage you all to go for it. Yeah, wise words. Definitely, 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 definitely. <laughs> I am so crazy. <laughs> Anyways, so with regards to, you know, drawing, so I remember that you mentioned that you draw um, anime characters. Do you draw like, you know, specific characters from like an anime or do you sometimes create your own characters? Or I was just curious if you could like, you know, go in depth about like, what do you usually draw? Yeah, so it's a little bit of everything, um, but recently I've been drawing pretty much only fan art for a movie called Promare, mm -hmm. um, which came out in 2019, but it's it's been all that I can think about drawing for the past year and a half, 
And um, my favorite characters to draw from that film are Gallo and Leo, because they have a really, uh, it's, it's just like a really, really strong protagonist pair. And I get a lot of enjoyment out of drawing them and sharing them. Um, but before that kind of became my life and my brand, I would do a lot of fan art for just shows that I was enjoying. So in the past, I've drawn for Haikyuu, um, Boku no Hero Academia. I did a little bit for Promise Neverland. Um, those are just some not notable anime that I have created art for. And then aside from fan art, I have designed and drawn uh, some original characters, but it's been quite a while since I've done that. Um, although I really do want to get back into creating original stories and character designs. So what I got to say is like, you know, I have to give you, that sounds like, you know, really fun to do. Cause it's like, you know, so it looks like you would do like generally a multitude of both, but you seem to lean more towards like drawing other characters. And I'm assuming like all the shows that you mentioned were from anime, right? Yeah, they're all anime and they're all a uh, series that had a pretty active fan base, which is a big part of why I enjoy drawing, not only drawing, but also sharing art online. Cause a big part of what makes it fun for me is being able to talk to other people about my hobby and what characters I like, et cetera. No, that sounds like, you know, su super fun overall. Cause it's like, you know, with this opportunity, like, you know, having similar interests, it also provides an opportunity for, you know, people to make friends and to, you know, socialize. So, you know, when we have like similar interests, all of that actually works out in the end. Yeah, it was definitely like kind of a godsend that I got into Promare when I did because it happened to be right before I um, transferred to a university out of state. Mm. And when that happened, I had like no social life and no friends because I was a transfer student uh, during the beginning of the pandemic. So not only were classes sort of like edging into being not in person, uh, but I also just didn't know anybody. And because of that, I was able to like make a lot of friends um, through social media and through my art. And that like really saved my my psyche. No, that's great. That's great. I'm, you know, I'm really happy to hear that. So, you know, if there's like something that I would, you know, encourage our fellow pals to do, especially our, you know, fellow pal artists, you know, a good way to connect is to like see who has very similar interests to you, whether it be, you know, joining a Facebook group or, you know, networking with people over Twitter or Instagram, just to see like, you know, who has similar interests. So, you know, that actually, you know, works out pretty well, nonetheless. Yeah, totally, totally. Oh my gosh. So this is actually something that I've observed myself. So I noticed that on social media, anime has like a really big following on social media. So like that actually brings up a very good, like, you know, opportunity. Of course, it's like, if I had to be fairly honest here, okay, I actually am not very familiar with anime. I don't really, you know, tip, I don't typically watch anime. Honestly, in my entire lifetime, I'd say I've only watched about two or three series but honestly in short I'm actually you know kind of an outsider to anime so it's like you know I know that you're such a big fan of anime and there was this one series that you uh, mentioned I or is it a series like Promare? Oh yeah what? yeah so it's a movie it's a film. Oh uh, I'm so sorry. No no it's fine I didn't know what it was until I watched it um but it's it's a film done by uh, studio Trigger, which is the same studio that produced uh, a couple of classics, like for example, Good in Lagan is one of the series that they made that did really well, and then also more recently, Kill the Kill. Um, actually, Good in Lagan wasn't created when they were uh, a studio, I don't think. That was earlier. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's a movie, and I would definitely recommend that you watch it. I could send you that title later. Yeah. Uh, it's really good. I really heartwarming story and good characters. I would definitely love to check that out. Awesome. I'll definitely check that out, you know, after this, you know, episode segment, because, you know, that sounds like a really great to like for me to check out. So, you know, this is something that I also want to mention as well, because I kind of noticed this in a way at the same time, because, you know, I'll admit that I'm an outsider to anime. So, of course, I don't really know much about it, like I said. And, you know, I really appreciate you, you know, recommending, you know, that title to me and, you know, to my fellow pals, if there's, you know, any other animes that you would recommend for me to check out, you know, 
feel free to drop them in the comments below. So the about me is I really like to, you know, be open-minded and I really like, you know, to check out new things. If there's something that, you know, I'd encourage, you know, people to do is like, you know, to be, you know, open-minded and to, you know, there's nothing wrong with checking out new things. And I would, you know, go very much encourage everyone to do that. Yeah. And um, if you are interested in getting more into anime, it's definitely become more accessible, like, and popular. I'm noticing a lot more anime showing up on Netflix. Um, Promare is now on HBO, I think. And mm -hmm. it's just a lot more easy to find things that might be more to your tastes. So, yeah. Hey, that sounds great. You know, I'll definitely like check those out. I do have HBO. So I'll, of course, like check it out on there. Um, with regards to, you know, the topic of anime, because, you know, I actually feel like, you know, this is kind of an important discussion that we're having. I really, you know, like that we're getting into this, you know, topic. And, you know, I also appreciate you, like, introducing me to, you know, a little bit more into it, because, you know, like, as I mentioned, I'm sorry if I keep mentioning this over and over again, I'm, I am very much an outsider to anime. So, of course, if I, like, you know, say anything that sounds, like, wrong, I sincerely apologize. But, like, if there's something that I want to mention... It's just, according to my observations, I kind of noticed that there kind of seems to be like, you know, stereotypes about anime or people who like anime. Did you kind of notice that in a way? Because I kind of observed it myself. Yeah, I think there is definitely a set of stigmas um, related to anime, like not only in fan groups, but also like within the actual animation industry here. Um, a lot of people experience like, a degree of shaming when they say that they're artists or animators but like their taste or their style tends to lean more towards Japanese animation um and then also even as like quote-unquote nerd culture starts to become more mainstream here you'll notice a lot of people like still kind of rejecting anime as like a broader category because it has a reputation in my personal opinion, okay, I don't think that people should be shaming others, like, for their interests. Something that I would assume is, I mean, of course I could be wrong, but, like, in some cases, the people who, who make stigma to against, like, you know, anime, I would assume that those people have never really watched it in some cases, I would assume. I think that's probably true a lot of the time, and I think those people are also generalizing what anime is a lot of the time, because anime is a much more broad uh, term than people, I don't know, people will often use that word to describe like a genre when within anime there are a lot of genres that exist and there are a lot of styles and um, narratives and I don't know, like anime is really just a general term for animation. Like if you're speaking Japanese, for example, Anime refers to any kind of animation. So there's like Disney anime, there's Western anime and Japanese anime. And it's it just describes animated work. So there are like a billion different kinds of uh, genres and styles and stories within that category. But I think it's been generalized uh, in kind of a weird way here for a lot of people who don't really know what it is. Like you'll hear people say, um, I don't watch anime because it's for kids or like there are also people who have a kind of like taken on the image that anime is like uh, I don't know kind of gross because there are a lot of tropes that exist within anime or that used to exist within anime that are kind of like frowned upon here but it really describes a much broader body of work that people tend to ignore if they don't really have much experience with it. And I feel like that kind of tends to be a huge problem with some of these individuals who don't even like, you know, who don't even watch the series. It it, it kind of doesn't make sense to start making generalizations about anime if you haven't even like watched it in my opinion. I mean like sure if you've like watched a few and it did and if you're not into that, that's fine. And I understand that, that you know anyone can express their opinion. If like you know those people have the right to express their opinion, I have the right to express mine. But in my opinion, you know, since I am an outsider, I don't think it's gonna be right if I start making generalizations about oh anime is this, oh anime is that, ew anime, that's for kids. Like 
whenever a person's like, anime's for kids, ew, anime. I'm like, why would you say that? Do you even know all the animes in the world? Like, what, are you only basing your opinion just on Pokemon or something? You know that there's also other series, right? And there's a bunch of other series I've never heard of myself. Like, you know, at the end of the day, sorry for my rants and all, but like, I'm just saying like, you know, it doesn't hurt to like, you know, at least, you know, open up your boundaries just to, you know, check something out. I mean, if, if, if you don't like it personally, then that's fine, you know, but I'm just saying like, you know, it's not right to start generalizing people as well as like generalizing the style if you don't really know what it is. Yeah, I think that's true of pretty much anything. Like if you don't have any personal experience with it, I don't, I don't know uh, how strongly you're allowed to be opinionated about it. Like, um, and there is like, you said it's kind of a little bit like bigoted to just assume that because something was um, um, developed or produced in Japan, it's going to be a certain way. Um, and I do think that there is kind of an image of people who like anime as like the the grosser fans or like the dirtier fans, because there is a lot of uh, fetishization of Japanese culture when it comes to anime. Um, and that in itself is a whole other issue, but it does tend to lead people to frown upon it, which it doesn't deserve. So it's like, you know, at the end of the day, what I'd say is like, you know, since I'm an outsider, I don't really have an opinion opinion of it since I don't know much about it myself. But all I would say is, you know, at least check it out. The moment somebody forms a stereotype like that, I'm not going to lie, but I've seen this all over Twitter. Literally, the fan base literally goes off. Like, literally, it's like a horde of, like, people on social media. And they're like, no, you're wrong. Anime is this. Yeah, there's definitely a very dynamic group of people who will fight to the death for the shows that they like. So, I mean, you get all kinds of people in any kind of uh, fan base. And yeah, I don't, I don't know how much there is to gain for like crapping on someone else's interests. Definitely. But you know, at the end of the day, all I'd say is like, you know, if you don't, if you, if that's not your cup of tea, I mean, I respect it. I mean, I'm sure everyone will respect it too. Everyone is bound to their own opinion, but yeah, definitely like, you know, I would definitely like, you know, be open to checking it out. So yeah. I and I think that also like, it's important to kind of find something that is for you um and i guess a lot of people have trouble like getting into anime because they can only find things that they're kind of like not so into because there are all kinds of genres so like um i don't know hitting people up for recommendations if they know what you like is a good idea hmm. no actually that sounds you know pretty good and you know i actually appreciate you bringing that topic in mind because it kind of makes me wanted to ask like you know if in your opinion, like Udon, for people who like don't really watch anime like me, but then are like kind of interested or opening to checking it out. Um, I know that you mentioned Promare, right? I was wondering if there's like, you know, any other series that you would recommend for us to check out as well. Just in your honest opinion, like some of your er, some of your favorites. Yeah, my all time favorite and the first one that I got into was um, a series called Full Metal Alchemist. There are actually two of them. Um, there was it, it was originally a manga and then there was an anime adaptation and then there was a reboot of the anime adaptation and the one that i would recommend is the last one which is called full metal alchemist brotherhood it's a really good series to get into if you're more used to like western animation or comics and you're kind of starting with anime because it it kind of lacks a lot of the anime tropes that people find like off-putting um and it's a classic that pretty much anybody would agree is a good good show it's um a really good story really good music themes and the character designs are also just really really awesome so i would definitely recommend that um for pretty much anyone and other than that i guess it would depend on your tastes mm. uh recently i've been really into uh shonen anime which is aimed at like younger male audiences but um, has been really widely adopted by all groups. Um, and one that I really like is um, Boku no Hero Academia, My Hero Academy, um, which is kind of like a superhero one. 
And then there's also uh, Haikyuu, which is a sports anime about volleyball that I really got into a while ago and continue to like. Um, recently, one that's doing very well is an anime called Jujutsu Kaisen, um, which is about like sorcery and stuff. So there's all kinds of crap you can get into. Um, and I can like send you these titles also to link in your description if you want. But those would be my personal recommendations right now. Hey. Hey, I'd love to check them out. I'll definitely, you know, I appreciate you, you know, sharing those with me as well as, you know, our fellow pals, you know, I'll definitely check those out. And, you know, thank you so much for like, you know, helping me introduce me into into this, you know, um, I just want to mention, I do apologize for talking about me a lot. Oh my God. But I, cause I know like, you know, Udon, this interview is about you. It's not about me. It's about you though. <laughs> we love to hear all sides of the story, Daniel. So I guess the next question that I wanted to ask was, you know, how did you get into drawing and how long have you been drawing for? So I pretty much started drawing as early as a lot of artists, which is like from very early childhood, um, nearly from birth, I guess, because I, you know, I think a lot of kids like to scribble, etc. And then I just continued to do it. And I started to get a little more serious about drawing um, when I was in middle school because that was around the time that I kind of like started to recognize it as something that I was like notably um, better at than some people. Like I had developed sort of a talent at that point like that I wanted to continue to improve upon. And that was also around when I got into anime. So I started to kind of like tailor my style more towards uh, the media that I was consuming and enjoying. And uh, that was also when I first saw Full Metal Alchemist. And those character designs really influenced the way that I draw. Um, like there are a lot of really muscular characters with like strong chins and like really, uh, dense line work and intense features and I like drawing that kind of thing um, and then from there it just kind of became something that I did with friends but also kind of on my own in that like a lot of the series that I liked and drew fan art for were um, series that I didn't have a lot of friends who liked the same thing um, and then it was around maybe 2018 or 2019, uh, when I started to actually um, post on social media fairly regularly. And that was when that element of what I do kind of came in. Mm. So with the story you're describing, they're kind of, in a way, see, I kind of noticed that there's like, you know, a little bit of a timeline. And, you know, I actually find that very interesting that you mentioned this, because, you know, from what I'm gathering, so you more so actually started getting more into anime towards like middle school, high school, right? Like yeah, middle. it was about maybe mid middle school, like seventh grade, I would say. Hmm. You know, I actually found that like, you know, pr pretty good to hear because it's like, you know, there tends to be like, you know, a little bit of that progress that you notice. So it's like you first mentioned that, you know, at a younger age, at first you would just draw like, you know, scribbles. So then... You, that's where you mentioned like you started getting more into um, the anime and then you also mentioned that you also like started doing like anime drawings like with friends as you kept doing it more and more then you eventually like you know use that to build up your social media brand so whenever I hear about this it's like you know it's very interesting to hear because there's like you know an, an aspect of progress that comes with it and this provides an opportunity for you to build up on your technical skills as well as your experience yeah it's really kind of like the more you draw, the better you get, the more people uh, you meet who also draw, and you kind of feel more inspired to improve when you're in a community of people who are drawing, um, as opposed to just like doing it on your own, has been my experience anyway. I know there are people who don't um, necessarily need like that sense of being a part of a group that does something, but mm -hmm. it's kind of become more of a social hobby for me um, in recent years. Um, as opposed to just something that I do by myself. And that has also made it easier for me to feel inspired to like share my work and sell my work because I know that people are expecting it and enjoying it with me. Awesome. 
And then you said that you're, you're one of your inspira drawing inspirations, or I don't know if that's the word, but like one of your start off drawings or one of your favorite drawings at first was like from Full Metal Alchemist, right? I think yeah, that, um, yeah, I would say that that style was like something that I really wanted to emulate at first. And obviously like it's changed a lot, but I think it was kind of instrumental in like how I, how I wanted my work to look and how it developed and also in like the kind of characters that I like to draw and the stories that I like. And then, yeah, because with that being said, I remember you mentioned that the characters tend to be very intricate and like muscular designs, right? Um, you know, one thing that I wanted to ask was in the process of like, you know, drawing those very intricate detailed characters, there are some people who emphasize realism and, you know, accuracy with regards to, you know, anatomy. So I was wondering if like, you know, how do you like, you know, address those in your opinion? I think um, in any kind of stylized work, like you find ways to create shortcuts because um, ultimately you're, you're trying to express something that is uh, derivative of realism, but um, particularly like with anime style art, obviously you're not drawing like a, like a carbon copy of something in real life and you're working with a 2d plane anytime you're drawing anything illustrating um so i guess like the main challenge there is trying to find ways to make what you're drawing and to make your style uh believable but also unique to the kind of art that you're trying to create to your own style um and for me that's meant trying to study elements of uh, realistic drawing and understand them to the point where you could create something realistically, um, but then just take those elements and implement them in your style in a way that you enjoy. So uh, for example, just understanding how lighting works in the real life, in the real life, in the real world, understanding shadow, um, understanding where you need to vary your line width to make something look similar to realism mm -hmm. um there are just a lot of elements that you kind of have to study as if you were going to create a realistic drawing um because there's a saying that is often quoted where you have to understand the rules in order to break them mm -hmm. so that just means that you have to be able to draw something realistically to effectively implement those fundamental things into your own work and some people disagree with that, but I would say that that's really true and it's worth studying realistic art, even if you're trying to draw um, anime. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. You know, it's actually a very good piece of advice. You know, I actually like kind of helped clear it up for me because it's like, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I don't really know how to draw. So of course I'm wanting to get, figure out how to get into that some more. So, you know, this really kind of, you know, answers a lot for me. So, you know, I really do appreciate you, you know, sharing that as well since your work is mainly based on digital drawing, right? I just wanted to ask what like, you know, what software or like materials do you typically use? My preferred software is Clip Studio Paint or CSP. And um, I would recommend it because it's, it has a lot of uh, similar or the same functions as Photoshop, but it's not as expensive because you only have to buy it once uh, rather oh. than right? Um, and the tablet that I use is a secondhand tablet that I got from my friend. And I think that it's a Wacom bamboo tablet. I would have to double check the model, um, but it's not expensive either. So I've, I'm kind of using like what is easily available. Um, although I'm thinking of getting a new tablet, but yeah, those are the tools that I usually use. So, you know, I actually really like that, you know, you mentioned you mentioned like the aspect of in of um inex is that I don't even know if that's a real word inexpensiveness yeah <laughs> <laughs> cheapness yo <laughs> what I was going to say was like you know do you have any advice on like how you would reduce like you know having to pay for too much yeah I know that um a lot of people can't avoid spending money on expensive programs and tablets if they're working in the industry like if they want to get into art professionally there are some things that you just kind of have to buy 
um, if you want to be up to industry standards, which is crappy. But if you're a hobbyist, <laughs> I would recommend trying to find softwares and um, and hardwares like tablets, pens, etc. that aren't the most heavily like uh marketed or recommended ones because a lot of the time if you're looking for like a drawing tablet you'll get recommended the Wacom Cintiq which is extremely expensive and it's a really good tablet but you don't need it like you literally don't need something that good um if you want to make illustrations like as a hobbyist um mm -hmm. you also don't necessarily need to buy Adobe products because they're very expensive and their subscription fees mm -hmm. um that you can't get around unless you like buy a, a download a cracked version, which I, I don't know, I guess you could. But if you want to buy things legitly and cheaply, I would recommend CSP is a really great program um, that goes on sale every year around Black Friday for like 50 or 75 percent off, I think. Whoa, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's a good one. And then um, as far as like tablets go, if you want to get into digital art, uh, there are cheaper Wacom tablets than the Cintiq. There are also, um, I never know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but I think the brand name is Huion and uh, XP Pen tablets that aren't Wacom and they're more reasonably priced. People also often use um, an iPad Pro with the program Procreate. Uh, which I can't do because the interface is like too simple for me after learning CSP. But um, a lot of people also enjoy using that. Mm. I appreciate you, you know, sh sharing those, sharing all of the resources. Cause it's like, you know, I feel like, you know, a big challenge comes in terms of like, you know, resources available as well as, you know, I guess financial challenges, I would say. So, you know, I really do appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. If, if you want, like, the extremely cheap options, because there are some free uh, drawing softwares you can use. I think they're called, uh, what is it called? Fire Alpaca is one. And then there's also Krita. Krita. A program called Krita or Krita or something like that. And if you want to look those up, they're free. I just hey. wanted to throw that in. Yay. Thank you so much, Udon. Yay. No problem. Perfect. So I'm actually going to, you know, shift gears into your um your small digital business um i guess because you know i actually just wanted to start off by you know asking a few questions about it as well as you know learning about your journey you know what is your small business called if you don't mind me asking it's called um udonia and it's on big cartel so that's udon ya I think that's the URL. It's linked in my link tree, uh, my Instagram. It's currently empty because I just had a big sale, but um, that's where I usually sell my merchandise. Hey, yeah. Oh my gosh, I really like that. See, Udon, you always come up with the catchiest like stuff. Udon, yeah. Oh my gosh, you always, yeah. You always come up with the catchiest stuff, Udon. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. You're welcome. I tried hard. <laughs> You're welcome, sis. Hey. <laughs> But um, one thing that I actually wanted to ask was, so for your store, Udon, yeah, <laughs> I saw that when I was looking on your social media, I saw that you not only post your artworks, but then you also do custom artworks, right? The Udon, yeah. So do you, is that a platform where you sell like your own art or do you, is that where you sell the custom art at? So oh, the Big Cartel store is for work that I've already created myself. So not custom drawings, but like typically fan art, because most of my following at this point is um, a following that I got while I was drawing Promare art. So pretty much everything in my store is Promare. Um, and it's a lot of like art prints. I do charms. Um, heart-shaped buttons I had for a while and stickers um and I had an acrylic standee that I actually collaborated with a friend on um so that's all art that I just draw for fun and then decide oh I could probably sell this and then I sell it um and I print it in mass mm -hmm. the commissions are a separate uh deal where I put out like a price sheet when I need money I'm like this is how much I'm charging 
and people who are interested can DM or email me and I uh, negotiate the price with them and what they want me to draw. And then I send them a PayPal invoice. So the product that they're buying is actually a digital file. They're not gonna get like a print, but um, they get like a high resolution PNG emailed to them of the art that they requested. So then with your commissioned art, is it usually like, is it always like anime characters or like, are you open to doing other drawings or is it like typically like anime, if you don't mind me asking? No, yeah. Um, I I draw all my commissions in my style, which is anime. So um, that's the kind of art that people want from me and expect from me. So that's what I do. Like I haven't done any kind of realism or um, landscape or anything like that. But I have gotten requests for things that aren't anime that I then draw in anime style. So like I even got a Harry Potter commission once. <laughs> Uh, which was really random, but I did it. <laughs> and uh, a lot of the time people want like their original characters that they've designed, their OCs. So I'll draw those for people. Oh, awesome. And then uh, occasionally I get, um, well, recently more than occasionally, I've been getting requests for fan art for series that I draw for anyway. So I've gotten a lot of commissions for Promare for like scenarios that people want me to draw for them. Um, and Hero Academia and other series that are popular right now. That's pretty good. It's like, you know, it's 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 very inspiring to hear because it's like, you know, you you have this like, you know, interest and it's like a hobby in drawing. Like you have this joy with regards to drawing. And now like, you know, you used it as an opportunity to like, you know, build your brand and potentially a business where it's like, now you're actually having people like, you know, where now you actually have people commissioning you to like create artwork and you know, that's amazing. Yeah, it's always fun to get commissions for things that I already like too, because then it's just kind of like I'm getting I'm getting paid to draw something that I already find fun. That's so fun. it's it's definitely really cool. If you don't mind me asking, so from what I so from what I'm gathering, so Big Cartel, that's where you sell like your Promare um, creations, and then on your Instagram, that's where you like take requests for commissions. See that, my fellow pals. If you need your, if you ever need an art commission, feel free to message Udon, which I will, you know, get into somewhere later on. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. But what I, you know, wanted to mention was, so it looks like there's a bit, there's like you know quite a bit of, there's like you know quite a bit of success, and it looks like you know your your small business is gradually growing and growing like your audience and you're getting like more commissions here and there. If you don't mind me asking, I was wondering if you could, you know, share your overall journey on like, you know, how it all started and like, you know, how you went to got to where you are. Yeah, definitely. I, I think I probably first thought of like selling um, merchandise when I was back on Tumblr and that was probably maybe like four or five years ago um, and the first thing I ever tried to sell was a print for My Hero Academy and it didn't do very well because I didn't have a big following at that point point. Um, and I had to sell like custom watercolor commissions with it so I was like well if you buy my print I'll send you like a free drawing with it which I would never do now because that's like a total ripoff for me <laughs> but anyway I I sold that and then um, my store was like dormant for a while and it was after I got into Promare and um, started accumulating a larger following that I also started talking to artists who were creating merch themselves and who were doing things that I hadn't done before like um, acrylic charms and stickers and like cute things like that that I wanted to try so I started designing merch around late 2019 and that was when I opened my store again and I did much better than I had the first time. Um, so I just kept adding items over time. And um, just recently I sold out of everything because I, I had a big sale because I needed to clear out all my stuff. But um, yeah, that's kind of how that progressed. Mm. So if you don't mind me asking, so the way that you managed to just like, you know, the way that you got it, well, is through like, you just kept on going for it. You just kept on drawing and then uploading it, right? Like Yeah, I... there was a lot of like advertising involved. Oh. Um, but it was easy to get people who are interested. It was easy to find people who are interested because um my artwork was already like circulating on mainly on Twitter actually, was where I was finding 
most of the people who wanted to buy like charms and things like that. Um, so once I was like active in the fandom, it wasn't difficult to find people who wanted to buy merch. Uh, you know, that's actually pretty good. So it looks like the process of doing this for like, you know, I would assume building up your small business is that you, um, you mainly emphasize social media through this where um, you, I would assume that it's cut, what you did was a process of, I guess, personal selling in a way. So what you did was like, you know, first you put your artwork on the social media platforms and then, you know, more and more people started seeing it. So then once they, you know, of course go to your profile and then they see that, oh, Udon does commissions for, you know, custom artwork. And then it's like, you know, people love your styles. So then of course, like, you know, as you get your work circulating for more people to see, that kind of like, you know, in a way builds your brand for people to want to like, you know, potentially work with you in a way, right? Yeah, I definitely think that um, having... Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I definitely think that having um, a found people through like a more convenient avenue with fan art, because, you know, and people are more interested in your drawings typically if you're drawing for something that um if you're drawing for a franchise that they already enjoy that's not necessarily true i mean people find a lot of success drawing their original characters uh, but for me fan art has been a good way to find people and once they like your art um for the content that you draw then you'll find people who also just like your style a lot for what it is um and that's when people want to commission you Awesome. So, you know, I have to, you know, say, I, I re really wish it best of luck on, you know, on your, like, you know, your, your store, like, you know, it seems like it's going really well. And, you know, I'm really proud of like, you know, the success you're going through right now. Thank you. I really hope to put more items up at some point, because it's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm really glad that you enjoy it, because it's like, you know, and, you know, with all of our fellow pals who are watching this, you know, to any of you who are listening, I hope this, like, you know, inspires all of you who, you know, whoever wants to do your own art or, like, you know, aims to open up your own small business. I really hope that, like, what we're mentioning can, you know, really inspire you to go forth for whatever you want to do, as well as, you know, I really hope that all of these, you know, provide, like, you know, helpful tips on how to pursue. In terms of, you know, your small business, do you have any other, you know, additional advice for, you know, folks who want to do, you know, pursue a small business like what you do? Um, I think a good method, well, I should actually say what, what has worked for me, because what works for me isn't going to work for everyone, obviously, and it depends on the kind of art that you like to draw. But I don't think that I would have uh, found as much success, like particularly with my online store, um, if it hadn't been for participating in fandom. Um, what I mean is like some kind of community. Um, for me, it was fandom. For other people, it's like um, original characters. Um, people do something called adoptables where they design a character and then they sell the design. Um, but I think like a really good way to build a following is to uh, find a community that you enjoy being a part of and then make friends within it. Um, because the best way to really market yourself on social media and my experience has been to make friends who will support you and who will share your work and who will kind of like endorse your work in a sense no I really like that that's really good you know I feel like you know the idea of support and you know I really and you know that's actually what this episode is about as well the idea of supporting like you know your friends and whether it be your own fellow artists is something that's really important, you know? There's various ways to, you know, support your fellow artists, whether it's, you know, giving a compliment, like, hey, I really love this, I love this. But then another aspect of, you know, being able to support your fellow artists, it's as simple as leaving, as pressing the like button on social media posts. A lot of, you know, social media platforms now run through an algorithm. So, you know, when you, whenever you press like, you know, the like button, as well as, you know, following your local artists, that helps get their work out even more on social media because you're helping them work against the algorithm. Yeah, artists are always struggling and fighting with the algorithm. So, I mean, it definitely makes a difference when you, I don't know, if you see something that you like, um, liking it, sharing it. Also, I've had a lot of people uh, recommend my art to friends and like word of mouth is kind of 
underestimated a lot of the time, but I've had um, increased sales when people are just like, oh yeah, I bought your print and my friend also likes Premiere and I told my friend about it and they wanted one. So um, yeah, I mean, just if you enjoy content, just sharing it in any way that you can. What I wanted to, you know, ask next was, do you have any like, you know, general advice for, you know, our fellow pals who are wanting to pursue art or, you know, become artists? Do you have any like, you know, advice that you would, you know, like to share? Yeah, I think I can give advice based on my experiences again. I just want to keep saying that because like art is such a subjective topic and hobby and like um, what brings one person happiness won't bring another person happiness or success or anything like that. Um, but something that I have experienced and a lot of my friends have experienced is um, that it's very difficult if you're posting art online, especially in a fandom space, to um, maintain like an awareness of the fact that the engagement that your art gets and the success that it finds on social media is not the only way that you should be measuring your worth as an artist. Um, because a lot of the success that I found over the past year um, has been like a combination of luck and good timing. And the fact that I was really interested in um, content that other people were also interested in. And over the past couple of months, I've definitely found, I and other people that I've talked to a lot, have found that um, interest in their art, for Promare at least, has been dwindling. And that's simply because people aren't as into it anymore. And when you draw for fandom, um, sometimes it can be depressing to like realize that once the hype is over, you're not going to have as much engagement. You're going to like uh, lose fans to some degree. Um, and you're not going to feel as though your art is being as appreciated anymore. And that's just something that you kind of have to like reconcile and deal with because it's not a reflection of you or your talent or your worth. It's just a reflection of the fact that you're posting art in a really dynamic um, scenario. And by that, I mean, it's just always changing and, um, you know, people often say that like progress is not linear. So there will be ups and downs. Um, and it's important to take breaks from social media and to not let that become the reason that you draw or the reason that you feel inspired because it's not a constant. You know, I would, I really appreciate you, you know, bringing that up based on what you are mentioning, like with regards to like drawing art, it's, it's to be like a activity that's to be fun. The thing is, it's not supposed to be treated like a job. It's more so supposed to be treated like, you know, a hobby that you enjoy doing in which the reward that you get is, you know, getting, I guess, paid in that, in the sense. There's this other thing that you actually mentioned where expectations there are people you may, unfortunately, everyone is bound to do this, but like, you know, you can have times where you would lose fans. I believe that, you know, everyone is bound to their opinion and, you know, their perspective and that's fine, but they're kind of in a way is like kind of a, I feel like there should definitely be kind of a limit to what somebody says because there are times when somebody critique somebody else's artwork, they actually go as far as calling the person names or saying stuff like, you shouldn't be an artist. I hope your business fails. Like whenever people say that type of stuff, I don't exactly agree with that. If you ever run into those types of scenarios, don't give up, okay? Just, I don't ever want you to feel like, oh, because of what one person, one negative comment said about my work, I guess I'm gonna stop. Like, no, don't, you don't do that, okay? You're bound to run into like, you know, negative feedback once in a while. But at the end of the day, do not give up on your dream. If, you know, drawing is the thing that you like to do, just keep going for it. Don't let any negative comments, you know, stop you from pursuing your dreams. Yeah, I I think there's a lot of truth to that and that's important. And um, I mean, I know that there are people who, who rec um, rely on the art that they do and it is their livelihood. And of course, like, I can't really speak to that because it's not my experience um yet anyway I mean maybe it will be someday but um for those people who do 
rely on their followings in that way. Um, criticism always has to be taken with like a grain of salt. Like I've had uh, followers even who came to me and like gave criticism, not like on the quality of my art or anything, but on the content. And I mean, when people follow me, they know what they're getting because I, my brand is very specific. I draw these two characters and I draw them in a certain way. And I've had people who came up to me and were like, um, hi, like, why are you drawing this? <laughs> and, you know, that feels like a criticism. It feels like them being like, you shouldn't draw this. This is bad. Um, and at that point, I'm just like, well, then why are you here? Like, why have you come to me? And, you know, I mean, the point that I'm trying to make is that people don't always think about what they're saying. And a lot of things that are said to you shouldn't be taken too personally because the internet is just a weird place and you're always going to encounter people who like just want to start frankly mm -hmm. um and yeah don't don't worry about them awesome perfect 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 you know i just want to say like you know thank you so much udon for you know sharing all of your perspectives with regards to you know like your experience with you know doing artwork as well as your small business but you know what i really absolutely love was you know the topic of you know the importance of not only supporting your artists but you know also like being able to you know I guess you know break stereotypes with anime and I also feel like you know I'm sure that there are many pals who are watching this who are inspired to you know one day like you know open up their own small business like Udon and even if it's not you know an art based one whether it's a small business itself the goal entire goal of this is for you to be able to follow your dreams. As I mentioned earlier, okay, Udon actually has her own small business, okay? Actually, I kind of noticed that in a way, I guess it would be two small businesses, actually. So the first being, you know, Udonya, which is a big cartel store where she sells from air inspired items. And I assume that she also sells like, you know, other types of merchandise as well. But yeah, um, Udon actually also takes commissions for custom drawings. So, you know, I would encourage you, my fellow pals, to, you know, to come check her out, you know? If you don't mind me asking, you know, Udon, how can our fellow pals, you know, reach you? So I have uh, my DMs open on both Instagram and Twitter. You can request to DM me and I'll usually answer because I'm on there all the time. Um, and I also have my email, my official like business email, which is spicy Udon monster for whatever reason. So you can email me there um, with inquiries about uh, commissions or um, I'll usually update about my store on social media, so you'll see there. Um, or if you're interested in any other kind of collaboration, I'm open to hearing about that. So yeah. That's awesome. You know, I encourage you all to, you know, check out Udon's social media accounts, which I will also link into the description below. But, um, you know, I, another thing that I also wanted to um, let you guys know is just a disclaimer. Udon has some, you know, social media posts or other content in general that may seem a little bit more on the mature side. So of course, I just wanted to give all of you a heads up. Of course, like for me personally, I honestly don't have an issue with any, you know, of the mature style content. But you know, I just wanted to give all of you disclaimers because just in case like, you know, a lot, some of you may not, you know, want to see that type of content. I just wanted to give all of you a heads up. But to my fellow pals who are, you know, wanting to check out, you know, Udon's work samples, but then don't want to see anything too much on the mature side, what I'll actually do is, you know, I will actually link one of Udon's posts as a sample for all of you to check out. Woohoo! Ooh! Udon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, 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 anyways. I just want to say thank you so much, Udon. You know, thank you so much for coming, for making the time. I really hope that, you know, Udon's journey inspired all of you, my fellow pal. Anyways, this is all the time we have for today. It's your boy, your fellow pal, Daniel Bandian, signing off for today. Bye-bye, my fellow pals. Oh, and by the way, before I go, just to make sure, Udon, I will definitely check out Promare, and I encourage all of you to check it out as well. Yes, thank you, and thank you for having me, Daniel. You're welcome.